Channel Payments Manager extension, or CPM for short, allows you to integrate your Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central software to Stripe's digital payment platform. This gives you the freedom to work with an external solution that meets your payment processing and collection needs while still being able to use your ERP system. CPM is embedded directly within your Business Central environment, allowing for a streamlined communication between Business Central and Stripe. A primary component of setting up your CPM solution is the setup and configuration of what is called the payment platform. The payment platform contains the necessary links and credentials for you to access your external Stripe account. The payment platform also has a number of setup and configuration options that allow you to configure the manner in which payments are retrieved and processed in Business Central. Uh, in a separate video, we walked through the process of initially setting up a payment platform. However, as you can see, there are a number of other fields that be, can be configured on this record. Now, this video is going to walk through the setup fields on the payment requests fast tab and talk about their purpose. Now, please note that these fields are all tied to separate processes. Uh, the purpose of this video is not meant to be a detailed, uh, deep dive discussion into these processes, but rather just provide some basic understanding of what these fields do and how they can be set up. Sweet Engine is in a continual process of creating additional how-to videos that provide a deeper walkthrough of individual processes. Uh, please be sure to review them uh, for a more full understanding of the functionality. So let's take a look at the Payment Requests Fast tab. Uh, as the name might indicate, uh, payment request records are generated by CPM to manage and maintain any payment request activities that are generated from Business Central and sent to Stripe. So if we, for example, we input credit, we take a credit card uh, uh, input against a sales document and we send that to Stripe, a payment request record is created as part of that process. Uh, the fields on this fast tab influence the way in which these payment request records are created uh, and, and handled. Now, the first one is pretty straightforward, payment request number series. Um, as is standard in Business Central, uh, you'll want to define a new number series uh, that's used to uh, number the payment request records that CPM generates. Uh, when retrieving payment information from Stripe, CPM will create payment entries into a related customer ledger. In this default payment method field, you can enter the payment method that you want to be assigned to these customer ledger entries. Uh, it's probably preferable that you create a dedicated payment method like this Stripe one that I have. Um, regardless of what record you use, uh, you will want to make sure that the balancing account is, is blank. Uh, next, we have this recollect CVC on save payment field, payment method field. So when processing customer payments in Business Central, CPM allows you to select and use saved credit cards that it retrieves from Stripe. Um, if this field recollect CVC on saved payment method is enabled, then as part of the collection process in Business Central, a user must re-enter the credit card security number, typically that three digit number that's on a credit card and acts as a, a security value. Um, this does add a extra layer of security, which is nice. However, it does create an extra step in the process. Um, and it's important to note that Stripe validates all this information itself. So our general recommendation is actually to leave it disabled. Let Stripe handle that piece of it and keep your process within Business Central smooth and streamlined. Um, in this next field, authorization validity, you can specify the number of days that payment request records will remain valid. Um, when a payment request is created, this period here will be used to calculate an expiration date for that payment request. 
it's important to note, uh, again, talking about Stripe, Stripe has its own authorization window of seven days. Uh, in general, our recommendation is set this value to seven days so that you are in line with Stripe's own authorization window. The other three fields fall under this sales order default setting uh, heading. They all serve as default for how payment requests are handled for open sales orders. Um, CPM provides some additional flexibility for how open sales order payments can be processed. Uh, again, this is a high level kind of presentation. This topic will be described in much greater detail in separate videos. Um, at a high level though, let's see what these fields do. So the first field is capture method. And this is where we can indicate whether or not a payment that's recorded for an open sales order should be immediately captured this immediate option or delayed. Now, if the delay option is used, then transaction will st it'll still be sent to Stripe, but it will be sent as an authorized payment rather than an immediately captured or realized payment. Um, now, if you select the delay option, so you want to send payment authorizations to Stripe, you then need to determine how you want to capture those authorized payments. And that occurs in this authorization behavior field. You can indicate that a user needs to either manually authorize a, or capture an authorized payment, or you can instruct CPM to automatically capture authorized payments when the sales order in question is invoiced. Again, if we select this latter option, we then have another decision we need to make. Uh, we need to instruct CPM what to do when an authorized amount is only partially captured. So suppose, for example, we authorized payment of $100 on a credit card, but then when we invoiced, we only invoiced $60. What we can do is we can instruct CPM to either automatically create a new payment request for the remaining $40 that was authorized, or we can set this process to manual, meaning that a user would need to manually create that payment request. Again, it's very high level, and there are, there are subsequent uh, videos that talk more about how sales order processing works, um, but the idea is to just give a general idea of what these fields do. Uh, and it's important to note that all three of these values are purely meant as defaults. Um, when you are recording individual payment transactions for specific sales orders, you can adjust any of these values as needed. And that does it for the payment request settings. Uh, as you can see, we have some other fast tabs on the payment platform record that allow you to configure other aspects of how activities are processed. Uh, for more information on how to set these other fields up, uh, please review the relevant videos.